Hi, hope you're doing well. My name is Steve. Today we'll be talking about stacks in Python. Before we get started, uh, if you'd like to read an article rather than watch a video, you can check out the blog post at this link. The source code for everything we do today will be on GitHub, and the test code to make sure that everything is working is also on GitHub. So some basic concepts about the stack. What is it? It's a LIFO data structure, last in, first out, which might not seem immediately obvious, but as we get into it, you'll see that the most recent object that was added to the stack will be the one that gets removed. There are three main operations for the stack, push, pop, and peak. When thinking about a stack, it's best to realize the resemblance that it has with real-world objects. Think of a collection of vertically stacked objects. The data can only be accessed in a specific way in this case. You can't take something out of the middle. You have to take things off of the top. Think about a stack of coins. If you took a quarter out of the middle of the stack, the whole thing would fall over. It just wouldn't work. Same for a stack of blocks, a stack of paper. Well, maybe you could slide a little paper out of the middle, but that's besides the point. Same thing applies for stack. The only way that you're going to interact with it is with the top of the stack. So some applications for the stack, I'm sure you'll find plenty more, but the ones that came to my mind were reversing a string, which we'll go over the basic process for that, evaluating prefix and postfix expressions, that's going to be one of your challenges, so start thinking about it now, and the Towers of Hanoi, which is a fairly well-known problem that you can look up on your own. Our operations, push, pop, and peak. We're going to start with push. But before we start, let's talk about stacks and nodes, and what exactly our stack object will consist of. A stack will consist of the top, which will be a node, and the only node that you have access to directly, and size will be how many nodes we have in total. Each node will contain next, the next node in the chain, and data, which is what we are storing. If you watched the linked list video, we went through how the next is basically just tying a rope from one node to another. Next is a reference to another node. If you want to learn more about nodes and also about linked lists, check out my last video. Also note that there are other ways of creating a stack than using nodes like we will be doing today, most notably a flat array. However, the flat array approach has the disadvantage that the size of the stack is limited to the size of the flat array, which would have to be resized if you were to exceed that size. So we're going to stick with nodes which are dynamic and you don't have to worry about how big your stack is getting. It's great. So for the push operation, first we're going to initialize our stack. You'll notice that the size is zero and the top is set to none. So we do have these two properties in our stack already. Size is just set to a default value of zero for initialization and top just doesn't reference anything. So if we wanted to go through and push a string containing the word hello to our stack, these will be some of the steps that we would follow internally. The first thing we have to do is create a new node containing the data we would like to add to the stack. As you can see, our new node has the data that we're adding or that we're trying to push, and yet it doesn't have any next yet. It's not tied to any other nodes. There are no other nodes, but we're not done yet. If the stack is empty, which is the case right now, we're going to set our top reference to point to the new node that we just created. And last, we have to increment our size by one. This way we can keep track of how many nodes are in our list. So now we're going to push something to this stack again. Now that there's something in the stack, it will be a slightly different process. We're still going to create our node containing the data that we're going to add, and then the stack is not empty. So we're going to tie the nodes next to the current top node. Now that that's done, we're going to set the new node as the top of the stack. Notice in this diagram that everything is accounted for. Everything has at least one arrow pointing to it. The new node has top pointed to it. The new node is directly accessible as the top node, and the second node, our previous top, is referenced by the top node. Either way, we can't forget to increase the size by one. So for our pop operation, if we were to call our stack.pop, what would be the result? Well, what's the first step? We're going to create an instance variable called whatever you want, in this case result, and fill it with how are you, the data that we're eventually going to return. We can't return it yet because we're not done. Pop removes the top node. Pop not only returns the data in the top node, but it removes the top node from the stack. So we have to set top to top.next. Notice now that that second node in line, how are you, our previous top, now has nothing pointing to it. Don't forget to decrement the size by one when you pop. Definitely don't forget to return your instance variable result. Since our previous top now has nothing pointing to it, we don't have to worry about it anymore. Garbage collection will take care of the hanger on, and we'll be left with a stack with just one node. 
So going back to our example stack from before, what if we didn't want to pop, but instead just peak? It's actually a very straightforward operation. We're just going to return top.data. In that case, it's how are you? Note that the stack is unchanged by this operation. It's exactly how it was before we called peak. Here's an example application of a stack. We want to reverse a string using a stack. For example, if we called our reverse function with the argument hey, we would want to get yeah in response. So the first step for solving this would be to push each character of the string onto the stack. We'll push our H, we'll push the E, which gets tied to the H and becomes the new top, and we'll push the Y. Next, we're going to pop each character from the stack and put it into a result string, which we can call whatever we want. We pop the Y, we pop the E and add it to the result string, and we pop the H and add it to the result string. Now the stack is empty, so we can stop and don't forget to return whatever result string you just built. So let's move on to the code and we can build our very own stack. All right, so our first step is to create our node object. We'll define our constructor in which we are passed our data D and we'll set the only two properties that this node object will have. First, it's data, which is equal to whatever the user passed in when they instantiated it and the next node, which by default is none. Now that we have that, we're ready to create our stack. First, the constructor, which has no arguments and there are two properties for this stack as we talked about before, top, which is none, and size, which is zero since it's empty. So let's uh, jump in and work on our push operation, which requires an argument of data, D. We'll create a new node using this data. And if we have a top node, this means that the stack isn't empty. So we'll set new node.next node equal to the current top node. After that, we'll set the new top to be the new node. And then we'll increment the size. Nothing to return, so we'll move on. Pop has no arguments. A special case is if the top node is none, meaning the stack is empty. So in such case, we will return none. Otherwise, we'll make our result equal to self.top.data. Self.top is now going to be equal to whatever it's pointing to, self.top dot the next node in line and we'll decrement the size by one and return our result value for peak it's going to be nice and simple if self dot top is none in other words if it's empty then just return none there's nothing to peak at otherwise return self dot top dot data whatever is in that top node send it back but don't change the stack now a bonus method is empty which we could have used above but we didn't there's two ways to do this one is clear but it takes more lines of code so i'll show you that first if self.top is none, return true, else return false. Makes sense. If the top node is not set, then it's empty. Otherwise, it's not empty. However, we can simplify this. Instead of doing all that, we can just return the result of the Boolean statement self.top is none. And that's all there is to it. So that's all the code for our stack. Now let's play around with it. Okay, in the same directory as our stack source file, we'll say from stack, put stack, there we go. And now we'll make a new stack. We'll just call it S, keep it short, instantiate it. Once S.size set to zero, just as we would think, S.top is none, okay. We'll push something, hello. S.peak is now hello, good. What's S.size? One, okay. We can push something else, greetings. S.size has increased, S.peak is greetings. Now let's try popping, S.pop also greetings, but now S.size is down to one and s.peak has changed over back to hello. Let's pop one more time. It returns hello, whoops. S.size is now zero, and pop returns nothing, nor does it change anything when it's empty. Same with peak, so we're all set. Okay, let's talk about challenges. The first one is reverse a string. We'll implement the reverse method with one argument, s. What it'll do is return the reversed version of that string, s. Next, a little more challenging is evaluate a postfix expression using a stack. So the function will be eval postfix given a postfix string and it returns a number representing the result of the postfix expression. That can be an integer or a float, whatever you want to do with it. Now you might not have heard of postfix, it's something good to read up on. It's basically a way of representing a math expression. When you and I write a math expression, we do 3 plus 4 and we use parentheses, 3 plus 4 times 5, whatever. It's called infix. Computers are a lot better at evaluating postfix and prefix. Postfix in particular lists the two operands before the operator. An example is 3, 2, plus, which in infix would be 3 plus 2 and be equal to 5. The two operands are 3 and 2, and after them comes the operator, which operates on them, 
and that is the plus. Similarly below, 5, 3, plus, 7 times is equal to parentheses 5 plus 3 and parentheses times 7. So that's the same as 5 plus 3 times 7. I plan to put each solution online in the code repository. Check the description for links to this and more. Good luck with that. To wrap it up, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. Also, any mistakes, definitely let me know. Comment on the video. You could open an issue on the GitHub repository or comment on the blog. Thank you for watching and have a good day.